Okay, good morning everybody. It's nine o'clock and we're going to rock. So um, we were planning to make this the inaugural event of the Startup Sauna, formerly known as the Alta Venture Garage. However, uh, the ESPO building instructions, uh, uh, inspectors decided otherwise and the design factory was extremely kind to let us come and stay here with them for one more time. So uh, I feel a bit reluctant now to announce that two weeks from now <laughs> we will be in the Venture Garage. That's still our aim, but uh, please check out Facebook and other electronic media in case the revenge of the ESPO building inspectors is going to be longer than anybody thought. But we, we hope to, to be in the Venture Garage two weeks from now. Uh, then I think this is probably, to me, this is one of the most comforting lectures that we're going to have because now seeing that we are at breakfast, I think it's very nice to hear somebody say that work only begins after lunch. So we still have a few hours time before we need to do anything. So with those words, I'll pass over to Lista and he can introduce his colleague and speaker of today. Thank you, Håkon, and thank you for being here. Last time we didn't have the microphone working and there were mix-ups with the events and the cameras. That was because Håkon was missing. And we didn't have any good jokes, and, but now we do. Okay, just, you know, let's get to the speaker. Without much ado, I would like to introduce today's speaker. Uh, I could tell many stories about him, but he would probably sue me. So I'll just cap that. Welcome my dear colleague, Janne, and he's going to take it from here. Thanks. <clears throat> Okay, hey, thanks everybody for coming. Uh, there's a lot of people here, so it's a scary place to be, but I'll do my best. Uh, so today, uh, I'm going to be talking about this uh, lunchtime. No, I'm going to be talking about uh, stuff that happens mainly like after the launch. Uh, my idea here is that, that uh, in many cases, we put a lot of effort into kind of designing the uh, service, so we just do these huge design projects and and then uh, do the implementation and then then we just put it out and and then the development stops so you just when you actually start getting some data about the usage you you kind of stop and i'm i'm going to look into ways of kind of making that a little bit better and maybe doing design a little bit more in an analytical way and and also also like validating that. So my name is Janne Toivola and I come from this company called Futurize. I work there as a senior service designer. Uh, I'm gonna first have a few slides about the topic more. So uh, I kind of stole this uh, slide in a little bit different way from Kari Pekka a couple of weeks ago, but I decided to try it a little bit differently. First of all, I, I didn't want to have a specific like uh, concept design phase. I just want to have design phase here. And in the early phases there, it's, it's a little bit more like uh, uncertain and fuzzy. And, and then when the development kicks in, you actually start doing more concrete stuff. The uh, other thing that I wanted to change was to put this lifecycle management there uh, into the thing. You could say maintenance as well, but that's, that's the term that we're using in in our company because we don't just want to do maintenance, we want to actually like develop the thing, thing further. So I'm going to be today mainly talking about the, uh, well I'm going to be talking about two things. I'm going to be talking about the design part and I want to look into ways of making, making design a little bit, like using the data that you have online and, and kind of basing your design on that, that stuff. And also another thing that I'm going to be talking about is the uh, like stuff that happens after the launch. S 
One thing that we've been talking about lately in, in our company is this uh, term called validated design. It was actually invited by Risto Sarvas here. Probably somebody had invited it before him, but, but he was the first one to say it aloud. So basically the idea is that, that when you're doing design, uh, it's, it's kind of bold to say that, that it's just guesswork, but it's basically it's just guesswork. Uh, you are trying to do the design in, in as analytically as possible and, and kind of put all the things that you, you know about designing products into that, but still you have no way of knowing if, if the design is going to work or not. So our idea here is that, that in order to actually uh, validate the design, you need to, well, obviously implement that and then you need to put the analytics there and you need to get the data right and you need to test that. So I'm going to be talking about design and then I'm going to be talking about the validation later. Uh, I'm trying to keep this as concrete as possible so, so uh, if I'm not making sense or being too philosophical please shout and I'll try to be concrete. I also have this imaginary case that we're going to be building together with you today. And please interrupt me if, if I'm not making any sense. Just a few words about the company. So we are a European uh, software design and development company. We are an agile company. We kind of do well three things. If you want to make it simple, we do stuff for web, uh, like online things. And then we do mobile. We've done a lot of mobile, native mobile apps, like 50 something at least for all the major, major marketplaces. And then we're doing this kind of more serious enterprise stuff like ERPs and all that. We have offices in, in well, Finland, of course, and then Germany and, and uh, UK. We're around 160 people or 65, I'm not sure what the existing counties, but but we've uh, grown pretty fast. Mm. One thing that kind of uh, what we've tried to build into our company is this this pipeline from the consulting into the into the kind of life cycle management and maintenance. So we we've tried to kind of make that pipe as fluent as possible. So like the typical way of, of of looking this is to have the consulting there and, and then other people doing the design and then third group of people doing the development and then life cycle. It goes to maintenance to some people that never has actually never seen that product. So we, we don't want to do that. We want to make it more fluent than that. So that's kind of our, our quest here. And, and analytics is one thing that, that we're trying to kind of use as a clue between those, those things. Okay, about me, just a few things that I've been doing in the past. So, well, digital analytics and search engine optimization, that's, that's been a really big uh, thing for me. I, I've done that for, I don't know, four or five years, and I'm really into that stuff. Still learning, but maybe something's already been learned. Well, then service design, obviously, I wouldn't be here if I hadn't done that. So, so that and then maybe in the past more of the usability and interaction design that's that's been a big theme these are kind of all stuff that relates to each other so you I'm not totally sure where to put the lines between those so more you actually learn things in in design more you actually understand that everything's gonna connect it yeah and I have an MS master of science here from here in, in TKK before it turned into alt. Okay, so that's that little intro into what I'm going to be talking about. Uh, so first, the design thing. I want to talk about the things that happen after the uh, launch, but, but actually there are things that you need to, you kind of need to build the analytics there into the product already in the design phase. And that's, that's why I'm going to be talking about that also. This is one way to put this kind of, to look at design. This is one way I like. It's kind of like, it's 
pretty far from actually building brick walls or doing this like concrete thing, but actually that's that's not a bad bad way to think of it actually so basically you need to build the the wall from down to from bottom to up, and this is one way to kind of look at what what's what are the bricks there so so in the in the very bottom you have the business model, so you need to figure out like what is the what is the way that you're gonna make money with this whole product. Then after you have that, you probably also know who's, who you're gonna be targeting that product to. So then you need to figure out what what the user actually needs, and and in order to actually build something that the, that that they would would need and and use. When you have that figured out, then obviously you need to figure out what's the what kind of content you're gonna have there and what are the feature set set of the product. Then after that you need to coat that with with uh, design candy, design magic and just make it pretty and usable and, and all that. But also because we're doing service design you need to f uh, figure out like well, obviously, at least m the marketing thing, that's really important. You need to figure out how to get people using that service. Otherwise, you're not being being very useful. And by the way, I'm going to be talking about mainly about web today, because that's that's what we I've been doing in the past most, and, and just to make it a little bit more concrete. But I'm sure you can use these things in other ways as well. Uh, I'm going to be starting to go through this from the bottom. So, so first up, the business model. One one thing that's really really important in in analytics is to understand like what are the goals that you're trying to accomplish with the product. It's well, it goes with with like every design that you're doing. Usually, you kind of have this vague idea that that what you're trying to accomplish, but but I've actually pretty seldomly seen seen kind of list of four things that you're trying to like accomplish with the service like what are the things that concrete things that you're trying to do here so so that's really important uh, this one way to look at the goals they need to be doable so they need to be concrete something that you can actually accomplish they need to be understandable so when you say that those four things like during 30 minute elevator ride for example People need to understand those, so they need to be something that you can grasp. Also, they need to be measurable. So if you can't really measure, like if, if you're uh, working towards those goals or against them, then it doesn't make sense to put that goal there because you, you have no idea if you're getting there or not. And of course, they need to be beneficial. So so if you're trying to like optimize this goal into getting like bigger and and better than it needs to be beneficial for your business. So it needs to be connected to the business. On a more concrete level, let's bring our, our little example here. And it's going to be this service design community site called servicedesignpros.com. So we're going to use that an, as an example just to make it a little bit more concrete. So this one way I kind of like uh, about how to look at the goals and how to kind of connect them with strategy. So this is going to be our strategy here. Establish a community around service design, sell advertising space and, and all that, get, get the forum running. Then we need to figure out like what kind of services do we need to actually make that strategy happen. So what are, what are the places that, that we can, can, can use? And we're going to be focusing on the service design pros website here probably we're going to still have this Facebook page and maybe Twitter and all that that stuff there, and YouTube and whatever. So in the online world you really need to fi figure out like what are the ways, other ways to get your message through than just your website. But we're going to be focusing on that now. Then if you have the service there, then you need to figure out what are the goals there. So what are, what are the things that you're trying to accomplish? And, and in our cases we're trying to get the registered users there we're trying to uh, increase traffic, so we want to make it a popular site. Then we want to sell the advertising space. And then we want to use this to actually get our, our ser like brand messages through and increase the brand awareness. Then when you know, know what the goals are, you need to figure out the ways to actually measure that. And then we get to those KPIs or key performance indicators, which are basically 
just stuff that you want to direct people into doing. So, so if your goal is to get registered users, then your KPI is going to be, well, new registrations. So every time somebody registers to a site, then you kind of have the conversion, and then you, then you can uh, count that conversion rate and, and all that. It's really also useful to figure out what what is the target. Like if we have that kind of a strategy here, then how much how much registered users per month do we actually need, for example, to kind of just get the kind of the baseline baseline there and the target there. It's also in some cases it might be useful to put this like euro value for for its its KPI. So for example every time you get somebody to register to the site you could count that it's it's around 50 bucks that you actually get by having a bigger group of people there and maybe you could sell sell those people to advertisers better. By the way the business model here really sucks. I couldn't figure out anything better but it's, let's not focus on that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really not the point here. It's the point point is to to, to kind of the thinking behind that. Okay, so that's that's the goal. That now we know what we're actually trying to accomplish here, and now we can uh, measure that later. Then to the user needs, uh, there's a lot of data about what what people are searching for online. There's actually like in 2011 there were like 158 billion searches per month, which which means like 61 uh, thousand searches like every second. So people are just typing something to Google, and usually it's like three or four words, and they they are really giving like useful information on their needs and and what kind of language they're using and and all that. And the good thing is that that Google is actually giving away that information, so. For example, here in, in Google AdWords, you have this keyword tool that you can use to actually like just do a do a query of of different words, and then you can see how many people have actually used th that phrase in Google searches monthly. It's really 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 powerful tool. Uh, you could use that tool to actually build this like huge uh, list of words that kind of relevant terms that people are searching for online. I did this like 140 uh, term list in an hour or so. So it's not like super big an effort, but still something that you need to do. But the real trick, at least to me here, is to kind of get those words and then group them into into kind of groups of of things that people are actually looking for. If somebody writes like service blueprinting there to Google, what is the thing that what is the user intent behind that that query? So what is the what is the person actually trying to trying to accomplish? And then it, then you could group them into these kind of uh, well user intent groups or whatever you want to call them. This is just some th something I did pretty quickly. So, for example, this what tools are there for service design? You could say that there's like 11,000 queries per month for that. And you could get your share of that, that traffic. And this is just, just kind of a way of, of, well, understanding the user intent. That's the, that's the real trick here. And basically, you could use that information then to kind of build your offering to support those, those quests and those user intents. And you can say that, for example, some of these things are, are just something that I don't, I don't want to be focusing on, so you can actually uh, rule out some stuff from here as well. Okay? Basically, you want to be uh, basing your content to these things then, and you, you want to create the content and functions to support those. And when you have that ready, then you need to uh, figure out the actual, like, if somebody is having this uh, quest of, of knowing what kind of tools are there for service design, for example, then you need to kind of get that quest and, and trying to uh, design the customer journey for, for that. So this is one way to put that. It's really quick. So, so people search for customer journey map, for example, then kind of selects uh, 
that service design pros a search result and ends up in the site and then through the forum and eventually uh, ends up registering to the site so there, there you have the conversion and it all started from that that kind of uh, search that wasn't like it, it wasn't a person that was actually trying to register to the forum or register to the site but it was just somebody that had this need and then you kind of supported that need and that person decided to register but the point here is that you need to like instead of just looking at the that at the service those are the green balloons here you need to also design the site like how how does how does it look like what what is the when somebody searches for that how, how are you going to get your search result there in google and and what is the what is the title there what is the description of that page there how, how are you going to get the user to actually click on that that link so it kind of moves to search engine optimization it's connected to service design believe it or not okay moving on to marketing this is one way to look at uh, marketing in the online world it's this or ac actually it started from marketing world this rayon model so basically you need to figure out first how to like reach the people so what are the what are the sources what are what are the advertising channels that you're going to use to get the people to click on your site that's the, that's the first thing you need to figure out you you need to actually list those things that that I'm going to be using facebook and and twitter and and then I'm going to be doing some ppc marketing in adwords and 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 all that advertising i mean if you want to use the service design terms then that's that's kind of the pre service phase of the of the service then when you get to to the site then you need to be like useful you need to actually engage with the with the people you need to give them what they need you need to like in, in our case you need to actually tell about the service design tools and, and just give useful information and actually make the, make the people love the service then when you have that ready you probably the person is going to leave and then come back and maybe search for something else and then see your site and remember that you were useful and and then come back and then maybe you could start activating that person so you need to like actually get that person to register or, or if, if that's an advertiser then you need to make that person to actually buy an advertising advertisement for from the site and that's the thing you're you're really focusing on but again because you're doing service design here you need to figure out what happens after the after the service so it's so a post service way of thinking and and that's kind of like how do you nurture that connection that you now have like how do you re remind the person that 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 you exist and and kind of give useful information to get that person back to the site site later and do useful stuff there so that was Rian model and those are basically the things that that by minimum in my opinion you need to figure out I bet there are a lot of different ways to look at this but this was my way to look at that so you have the design ready and as Karibek was saying a couple of week, weeks ago you probably are, are going to be doing a sort of some of that design like in the same time that you're doing the development so so you don't want to want to do this upfront design too much so you need to do the minimum there and then start just implementing and try to get the service out as possible as i said earlier so any questions on the design part before i move on to actually validating that design everybody's eyes are just rolling so i'm doing a good job here excellent so yeah well this was kind of simplified of course you want to like get the users involved in the design phase as well of course but and also you try to like use the use the sources for for information that you have already in the design phase so you want to make it as real as possible but my point here is that that really when you when you are actually going to need know if it works or not you actually need to implement it and and just get it out and get people using it and then you can do some more 
user testing and all the stuff that I'm going to be talking next. Good question. Anything else? Okay. So validation. Um, when you get the service out, uh, this is one way to kind of get the analytics rolling and get the get the kind of uh, iterative way of looking into the service and its functionality. That's a, that's one way to look it, look at it. So first, you need to report like. What what happened? So how are we doing? How did we do last month? So you actually get the use those KPIs that you selected in the in the beginning and, and try to get just get the understanding. Kind of look in the rear view mirror and see see if we're doing a good job or not. But that doesn't really help you a lot on improving things. So you need to also like analyze. So like if there are something happening in the reporting part, then you need to analyze like what it, what are the things that are happening there. So why kind of try to understand the why part of it. It's usually is very difficult also, but you kind of just get some hints there. You kind of understand that this might be the reason that that I did something differently this month, and then something changed. So it must be this, and, and then you kind of again take your design skills and and just try to like guess how you could make it better and just then you need to do it so you need to actually act act on that and fix it and then next month or next week or whatever your loop is you actually get some data on, on if it was a good thing or not to change that so that that's that's really really the thing okay so how you could look into the business model. This is more on the reporting side. So this is the uh, original table that I had, but there's two couple of columns more. So first off, we have this uh, October numbers for it. So you actually know that you targeted for 100 registered, more uh, registered users, but you only got 55. But it was still more than, than the previous month, so maybe you're doing a good job here. Um, so the idea here is that instead of just looking at the individual numbers, like absolute numbers, you, you want to be looking into the chains. And here we only have one month, but actually you would want to get kind of the idea of the trend, like six month trends and all that, to get, get a better idea on, on if you're doing a good job or not. But the whole point here is that, that you kind of have this, well you have this goal of getting more uh, registered users, and then you need to figure out like what are the things that I'm going to do like uh, this month or what are the next actions that are, I'm going to be doing to get this this better and get get more registered users and maybe a couple of things that come to mind is to maybe have this Facebook campaign or something and and maybe do some conversion optimization on the registration page maybe that's the problem there and the idea is that that every time you have this call you actually move that goal to concrete actions, otherwise you're not doing anything useful. Okay, user needs. Did we reach the users that we intended to reach? Uh, again, a couple of columns more. So if we know that, that there were people looking for generally like w what kind of service tools there are for service design, uh, you know that there are 11,000 queries for that. And then we can kind of calculate, take those search terms and look at our analytics and see how many people actually came to the site using those queries. And what is our share of that? Like if the potential potential traffic is there, then how, how much of it did we get? And, and in, in our case, it's just some persons, of course, because it's a new site and all that. And again, we need to look at the trends instead of the uh, individual numbers. And also, we want to be even more smarter than that. Just look at the uh, the amount of people. We also want to see what they did at the site. And one way to look at it is to s see the conversion person. So, so how many of the people that came to the site looking for the service design tools actually decided to register or do something something else something something useful there at the site 
So that's when one way to kind of have a feeling of what, what they're doing. Also, you could use those search terms that you selected in the beginning to actually segment those people. So, so it's pretty easy to look at the individual. You could have a segment called what tools are there for service design or probably something wiser. But anyway, you can use those search terms to segment people and look at different different segments there and, and see their performance and, wh and what, what are the, those people doing in the site. That's really useful. That's from our site, so it's a side step here. Okay, content and functions. So how did people navigate the site and, and, and use our content? I only have this one tool that I find really useful. It's the visitor flow report. That's that's directly from Google Analytics. So you can actually see what the people are doing, what, what kind of uh, pages they are using there. Where did they come from? Where did they end up? What did they do so next? How many of the people actually left from from there, from the site, like directly or from that page? And maybe if there are like big leaks, for example, there in our case, on the home page, around 50% of people actually leave directly. Maybe that's that's something that we should look at into and try to get that better. There are, of course, other tools to look at the content. Uh, like you could see what are the most important pages that people are using the most. Uh, what are the pages that that bring most value to you? Like what 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 pages actually have like biggest impact on the conversion. So if somebody comes to that page and then converts, then it's going to plus for that page. So it's obviously doing its job pretty good. You could also look at the, the landing pages and, and maybe understand that better. Like where, where are the people actually starting their journey? Yes. Yeah, so Hoka's question was that, that if we have like really good pages and really bad pages, which ones should we actually focus on? Like getting the good pages better or, or the bad pages uh, better? Uh, it depends on what you're trying to accomplish, of course. It depends on what's what's kind of the... Like you could look at into the bad pages and, and see what, what, what are their... What, what is the things that you're trying to actually get to the people, to give to the people? Is it could we actually remove that bad place, uh, bad page totally? Is it is it needed? Uh, you could also look into the good pages and try to understand the customers better. So you could kind of get that user user insight kind of thing going on. So you could look into that and try to understand what was the good thing that people actually liked in in that sir that page. Or you could look into the like. Why, why did that page actually become so popular? Like, is it, is it because of the marketing or, or whatever? So I, I would say that both. Uh, it's, there's not, not a like yes and no, no question uh, answer to that. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure if I got the uh, question completely right, but uh, uh, Google Analytics, yeah, you're absolutely right. It's kind of this like uh, click stream tool, so you only only get information there when people actually click on a different page. So it kind of gets that. But there are other tools that you can use to to actually like. I'm actually getting into that pretty like next so maybe I'll just go on and if you please ask again if you, if I'm not replying that so the UI and visual design so are you are other people actually able to use that design and actually get get what you're trying to do here this is one way to look at things so if google analytics was was kind of uh, measuring the changes between pages 
and then some like events maybe inside pages, but mostly like the changes between pages. Then there are other tools like Clicktail or Crazy Egg, it's another another popular one, that actually look into inside inside single page. So it's called like in page analytics. And you can have these like pretty neat uh, heat maps. So for example this one here actually measures like how long in in the page how how long did the people actually scroll so did they actually see the uh, bottom of the page at all or then you could see like what are people clicking at the site is there maybe something that that should be a link that people are li clicking a lot but it's not for example some pictures it's like the classical usability issue in in web or then you could see like where are the um, mouse moving in, in in the page so that's that's really one way to look at the like individual pages you could also use clicktail to uh, look into like uh, forms for example how are people filling the forms are there, are there maybe something there that you could improve so that's really 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 useful when you start trying to like uh, try to understand what's going on like inside a single page another thing that you you could do is some a b testing so you wanna you wanna kind of instead of just because it's it's always guesswork as i said like if, if you have some page that you wanna make better then you need to like just take your design skills and and just try to make a better version of it and then test with that but a b testing kind of makes it quicker so instead of just making one new version and then wait a month or so you could actually make like three versions so you could have the original page against these a b and c versions and then just try to uh, understand what's one, which one's better like which one brings brings the most value and here we can see that the a for example in this case w had the 91 percent chance to beat the original so we should probably go there but we can also continue to next iteration and, and take that and, and make it even better and then have this E here that's 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 like really really good. Um, well it depends on how much traffic you basically yeah. Yeah, sorry. Uh so the question was what was there some uh idea on on how long uh, how long uh, iterations to have it really depends on how much traffic you have so you need to have like enough people using that page to actually get reliable information on it so if you have a lot of usually it's some weeks I, I would say but it, it can be even faster if it's a really 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 big site for example if you're running Amazon it's probably not like they're gonna be uh, spending two weeks waiting for the results I'm, I'm betting it's it's gonna be days or or even hours mm. yeah I, I bet there are some rules for that but I don't, I'm not I don't know but it depends on the case Yeah, you kind of replied your question already. So, so yes, it it works like that. That you actually make three versions and and have them there at the same time, and then you just direct some portion of your traffic to each one of those. So you could pick for like for example, fifteen persons for each, and and then have the original there as well. Or if you're you you want to play it safe, you can just pick one person or so. There's this rumor that Amazon, for example, is giving their users their like employees one person or or some some per percentage of of all the visitors just to play around and figure out something better
So the question was that is it a problem to actually get the same peop same person using the site like twice, and in the in the uh, between those visits actually re gets the cookies out, so so get the different version. So in the first visit to get that A version, and then second time the B version. Yeah, I I'm guessing that that could happen. Yeah, but I wouldn't say that's it that it's kind of a huge issue because you're not like changing the page totally. You don't want to make that drastic changes. You want to make it. Hmm. The system tries to avoid that, but but I bet there are some situations that you could run into. Okay. So marketing, where did the users actually come from? This is like a really, really simple way of looking it. Just list all the all the uh, traffic sources and then just look at those, like how many people came from each. And then again, because we're not just optimizing the amount of people, we want to optimize the end results. So we want to focus on the conversion percentage of it. Uh, the question was, what's the definition of branded uh, traffic? To me, it's uh, direct traffic, so people that actually type the URL directly to the, to the browser, plus those people that actually came to the site with the brand name on the search result. But you can have your own definition on that, but that's just one way to put it. Okay. My boss was saying that I only have five minutes, so I need to wrap the things up. <laughs> yeah, we're sharing a brain here. Yeah, so just a few slides, two to be precise. Uh, this is really the thing that I'm trying to force here. Do you things base things that you do on the site, on the business model or, or your strategy? Try to do things that actually bring value to your site instead of just changing things randomly because you feel like it's it's better to do that so every t the big question really is that what are, what are the concrete next steps that I want to be doing to get that business rolling what can I do to get that make that better but also if you look at the look at it the other way around you could also take those concrete uh, projects and actually try to understand what are, what what are the reasons that we're investing into this or in, in in our cases there are many cases that 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 the customer wants some project but we really don't have a clear picture on on why we're doing it so we want to understand what are what are the what are the business implications behind that like wh why are we doing this that's really really important for us as well So that's kind of the philosophical thing behind that. And just to, nothing new here. It's just a table with all the, all the kind of possibilities for for first designing things and then validating, validating those. So I'm not gonna go through them. Any questions? Risto. Lista was asking, like, whose role is it to actually think about that stuff? Hmm. I think everybody should kind of understand the big picture, like this picture here. Try to like, or maybe if you not understand the picture, at least like understand the reasons behind those things. That that's really important. But I, I think this could be perfect job for the designer or maybe concept owner to think about these things but also in the on the customer side if you're doing customer like consultancy thing then maybe the product owner should be pretty pretty into that stuff i'm kind of hoping that it could be outsourced to the it provider or, or the company that's actually doing the changes but but in reality it would be a lot better if it was the customer that that were really into these these things
So the question is, is uh, was that, that is it actually a good idea to think about these goals in the beginning instead of just doing it in the in the end? Well, to be like perfectly honest, I haven't been involved in many cases that 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 the project would have actually started with defining the goals. But to me, it's the only way to do it efficiently. You should really, really start the project by doing that and try to force it, force the goals into concrete things that, that, that both the customer and the IT provider or whatever actually understands. Because in many cases, there are some discussion around around why, why we're doing this and what are the business implications here business goals but but they really don't get concrete enough and you really don't think about how you're going to measure these things and in in any many cases uh, when you start thinking about the KPIs like after the project uh, project has like uh, finished or is on production then in many cases you can't really like maybe measure those things that you would want to measure so that's that's my point that by doing it in the early phases of the project, you, you end up doing the site in a way that it actually supports those goals and, and, and also like on a more concrete level, actually make sure that, that those KPIs can be measured. So the question was like, how much complexity does it bring to the development work to have the analytics in place? Uh, it depends on if, it, if it's a really simple site that, that's been built uh, in, in a smart way anyway, so not like using too much JavaScript or, or something like that, then you don't necessarily need to do anything. You just add the tag there and, and that's that to make it simple. But in many cases, if you have a like really like func a lot of functionalities there that, that that's happening like inside a single page, for example, then you need to have the, those like events there in Google Analytics. For example, you can have these events that that you just decide that if the per person presses th this button, then you get this event into the system, and those you need to kind of build into that. But it's really really simple anyway. You just need to do it. So it's not like days of work in many cases. So how to get those um, uh, necessary people there? Uh, mm, well, at least we've been trying to build the lifecycle management team in a, in a way that we would have all those necessary competencies in the team. But of course, it's a challenge because the budget obviously gets, in many cases, smaller there. So you can't spend like that many days and days in, in just doing analytics, for example. That's one thing that we've been struggling with lately. But I guess what helps is to get people that, that actually have a wide wide skill set. So for example, Simo here who's doing some projects here for, for lifecycle management. He, he he's like responsible for the whole like uh, development. He's kind of getting that uh, project management role there, but he's also like a designer and and is able to understand the analytics as well and get that s that forward. It depends. In many cases, it might be more practical to have different people who are actually like have time to do those like smaller projects because the the people that actually designed and developed the the site in our case uh, are probably going to be doing something like the next big case. That's just the reality. It, it kind of sucks, but that's that's the way it goes. But what we're trying to do is to get those like people in the lifecycle management team into the development projects already, 
like at least in the in the like later phases there. So get those people to kind of get the transition between the teams as smooth as possible. The question was like, how how do you know what's the minimum viable product that that you want to be launching? Like my point here was that you would need to launch as as quick as possible. Uh, again, no like yes or no quest, uh, answer. It depends on on the case really. Uh, in many cases, when you're doing web websites, for example, your there is already some like previous site there that you're trying to like uh, replace with this new new design. One way of of doing that better is to get this like beta version of the of the site there and just try to like get people to use that already. Like there's pretty popular sites like like beta.ule.com for example. That's that's I guess it's been there for for years now or so. So they're kind of using that to test new ideas and so that that's one way. But it depends on the case really. And Rista was saying here yeah, that if, if there is a physical component that you're you're using, or if it's a tool, some like like ERP system or whatever, then usually you have a really like like strict set of things that that you just need to uh, have the service for. Then it gets more complicated, and maybe this doesn't work that well. But still, like inside individual features, you can you can do this like minimum feature set feature. Uh, implementation and then take that feature forward later. So the question was, uh, is there some recommendations for tools, analytics tools for cases that that you don't, uh, that's not like on the public web maybe? Uh, well, uh, actually you can use like Google Analytics for, for cases like that as, as well. Like you can use it for internet and all that. Usually the practical problem there is that the data actually gets transmitted to to, to the states, for example, in, in Google Analytics case, so you don't really own that data anymore, or you own that, but it's not like on your your own servers. So if it's uh, some data that you don't want to get into the wrong hands, then then that might might be bad. Mm. At least my not very educated uh, opinion on that is that it's in most cases you could still do it because it's like you can secure that that like those data streams like that go behind be between Google Analytics and the service that people aren't actually able to intercept there so you only have the problem that that the data kind of the for example if you're building an intranet then you might have Google Analytics knows the kind of the file names that you have there it doesn't like get more sensitive than that so in many cases, I would say that, that Google Analytics is a perfectly viable situation for those as well. But there are, are like more more professional tools. Like I'm not an expert on those, but but there are some tools that you can actually like set up in your own servers and use those those then. But really, it doesn't doesn't you can use Google Analytics for services that are not on the public web as well because it just uses those. JavaScript queries outside the service, so it's not like technically <coughs> difficult at all.
Great. Thanks. <clears throat> Thank you, Jan. Now it's 10 o'clock, so you still have two hours before work starts. <laughs> So, thank you everybody for joining us. Uh, two small requests. Uh, if you're sitting in a chair, could you please do us the favor and help us and take the chairs and stack them five high onto the stage. So that, that helps us a little bit clean out the space. And then uh, we have the next uh, event two weeks from now. So then it's 358, who's going to be presenting here and. I think the topic was, uh, how should I say, rather provocative, and I think the heading of the next event is like, there is no such thing as service design. So perhaps that's then going to be the last event that we will have, and we'll cancel the rest <laughs> if, if it gets too, you know, if it totally kills us. But hey, thanks for coming, and uh, please remember to come back in two weeks' time and, and uh, check out on Facebook whether we're here or whether we are actually finally able to meet in the newly renovated garage. Thank you.